morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're back again. Today's Thursday. Feels more like a Tuesday or Wednesday to me though. And of course you're watching this on a Friday. If you're watching on time, that's crazy isn't it? No. So that is empty because we're about to rewire the whole compressor and install an STC 1000 so we can control to a tenth of a degree the temperature that that unit sits at. Somebody asked in the comments yesterday if I could video the whole thing. Freaking damn right I can. So uh, we're going to take this piece of kit apart. We're going to get stuck into the wiring loom. We're going to cut the feed to the compressor. We're going to install a new uh, thermoprobe, obviously the one that comes with the STC, and we're going to put um, we're going to put an STC in line with it to control it all. Don't know if I'm going to put a relay in yet or not. It depends at what current this uh, machine is drawing, whether the STC can handle the switching. I think sort of STCs, are, they say they're good to 10 amps, but I don't know. Maybe five you'd want to run them at a, on, a, on a regular basis. We'll see. Anyway, we'll get it up in to the workshop and on the bench and once we're there we'll be able to look at this a little bit more in detail. Gosh, I feel like I should be entering a strongman competition putting this up here on its own. Whew, it's far too heavy. Right, so this runs at 6 amps, that's the total consumption. It's got a 10 amp main fuse, so by theory then, if an STC, connected to this because I've just tested it, if an STC has a switching capacity of 10 amps, and it says 10 amps on the cooling side, then we should be just about running it at 6 amps, just about in range. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I'm over here. I haven't gone far. So, I think it's worth a punt. Um, this is obviously the uh, containment area and on the back of the enclosure panel there is of course a wiring diagram which we will use to determine exactly what we need to be switching and uh, where in, in this uh, massive wiring we are going to insert the STC 1000 basically we're just going to be removing the thermostat and uh, whatever the thermostat is switching that's what we're going to switch ultimately and then we'll just add a live and a neutral to pull power into the STC 1000 as well that's not going to add any more current to the system they draw uh, 100 milliamps I think is the max an STC is going to pull Maybe a little bit more when it's switching its contactors, but not a deal more. So, here is, the good thing about this door is it comes off. So here is a quick shot of the wiring diagram. If you want to see this in detail, I'll hold it as steady as I can so you can pause the video. You're guaranteed to get at least one good shot, at least one good frame if I hold it there long enough. So that's what we've got. So I'm going to cut this box open now, take the screws out, get into the wiring, have a look around, isolate the cables that I need to isolate, and then once I've done that, I'll explain what I'm doing um, as we progress further down the road. I'm going to quickly talk you through what we've actually got here on this uh, this little board, if you like. 
So, um, the power's coming in via these cables here. So we've got uh, the live coming in. That comes directly into a switch and uh, a little um, indicator button on the front here. And what that actually does, uh, this switch selects from selects between either a water bath or an ice bank. So if we're selected for the water bath, then that's when this uh, rear stack comes into play. So you can make the water bath colder or warmer. Basically when this stat trips and this stat is connected to this particular thermoprobe here. So we've pulled that out. That's not going to be used anymore. And then if you want to just have an ice bank, you'll flick that down for ice bank and that'll put this uh, this stat into play. Now this stat is just uh, it's factory set. There's no rear stat on there. And uh, this runs off of this thermoprobe. And this will basically create an ice bank. And once it gets to a certain temperature, it'll turn back off again. So these are the two um, feeds that we're going to get rid of. But you will notice that this one has a pink line coming into it from the selector switch. And this one has a white line coming into it or an orange if you look down there as well, an orange line. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the pink and the orange uh, off this section here. So now that that stat has nothing selected, then what we will do is where the orange one was at the top, there we go. We will change this label to on and off so we can turn the compressor on and off while still maintaining power to all of the recirculation pumps. And then we'll just take a live feed from that terminal there and that will then go to the outlet for, for to the power cable, while well, I get my words out, to the compressor. So I'll just get these stats out of the way so we're not looking at this jumble of cable because it's quite difficult to figure out what is what in here. And then when we know that we've got a live from the compressor going through this switch, then we know we can just turn it on and off via this switch. And then what we'll do as well, we'll bridge that. That will then also go via the STC when we decide to mount it in here so that uh, when we turn this on or off either this or the STC can break the circuit for the compressor to come on so everything else can work that's not a problem uh, but this will only turn the compressor and maybe the glycol pump the glycol for the heat dump will also be carried through this and the STC but the recirculation pump for the glycol tank, the ice bath proper, that will be on a separate route. So let's get rid of this gubbins and then I'll be able to give you a better idea of exactly what it is we're trying to achieve in here. So just to reiterate as to what we've done, um, we've got this little green neon here, which is blown, but that doesn't matter. We still have continuity of live via this uh, piggybacked cable. That goes into our selector switch where we could select either an ice bath or if you recall um, a water bath. So we're now taking that live feed and as we select, or well, we don't need to select anything, we can take that completely out of the equation if we want to. I can't get the bugger off, but you know what I mean. So this extra tail here went up and into this section where we had a little test switch. See this momentary switch, you could quickly turn the compressor and everything else on with that. We don't need that. So I've taken that out of there 
and what we'll do is probably replace that section with come on you pig oh, there we go we'll probably replace that section with the STC that'll fit in there nicely so there we go we've got the live coming in to what is now our um, on and off switch so then we're going to say all right and we want it on well this is the cable that supplies the glycol pump and down here this black cable supplies the compressor the white glycol pump is just a lie for the glycol pump that's not a problem the black compressor cable however runs through something else so it's difficult for me to see if you can see this but just down here we have a little uh, thermistor or varistor whatever it's called so as this pipe gets hot if it gets too hot it'll open a contact inside this little box here turning the compressor off but the glycol pump will still be running because that's powered individually by this white cable so what I'm going to do essentially is we're going to take this white cable this little bit doesn't need to be on it oh come on you pig some of these are so difficult to get off there we go and then that is going to be our uh, cooling out and here is our cooling in so we're just going to take of course framing so here is our cooling in so we're going to take the cooling in that's going to go through the STC 1000 and then this here this will be in fact I might just do that somehow do we pop that in there fold that around sheathe it and then I can use whatever's running off of that to run into the back of the STC 1000 and that will give power to everything or I might just cut that off altogether and put a little chocolate block terminal in there that's probably the easiest way to do it because they're all common so that's the cooling out for the STC that's the cooling in for the STC not that brown one but this coming off this peg here it would be this brown one and then we need some power for the STC so we can also piggyback off here and that would be the neutral dead simple now I've figured it all out so let's go ahead and cut out a little section in this little piece of tin for the STC to sit and then also we will uh, wire it up and turn it on <laughs> Okay, here we go. If it's gonna go bang, it's kind of now when it's gonna go. Uh, oh, I haven't fitted the thermo probe for the STC 1000, so so it would throw an error code. So let me just bring that back out and. Spin it around and just pop that in there. Easily rectified into the sensor section of the STC 1000. I'm literally just in shot here, so bear with me, folks. 
we'll put that back up to position. So of course we're going to test it before we tie wrap all the cables back together. So plug in. Well, the STC's on. Uh, this should turn the glycol pump on, but it shouldn't turn on the compressor. Oh no, it shouldn't turn on the glycol pump either actually. That's that's right. It should only come on when it calls for cool. So well let's go for it. Heat up the probe. We can see that uh, the temperature is climbing now and the heating side should go off. There is a one minute delay obviously to save cycling pumps on and off and breaking them so we may have to wait for an extra 30 seconds for that delay to be exhausted by the STC but it shouldn't take too long. Boom, straight on. And we are live. Friggin' right we are. And this should cut it off. Oh, that's awesome. There we go then. So, that's ready to be put back together. And this is ready to be put in to service. Friggin' right. So just a little brief distraction, I've got a mate who came along the other day and he saw that I'd put some plants in some of the old casks that we've got next door and they look nice and was talking about planting spuds in them and you know when we got these casks if you recall when I spoke to you about them I said I'd probably recycle the steel ones, sell the alley ones and I'm going to have to find some way of getting rid of the plastic ones because I don't really want to use them and uh, well what better way than making potato planters? You can have new potatoes for Christmas Eve, folks, this way. You can bring your spuds into the house. And if you have a look inside, well, that's kind of why I don't want to use these and put them into circulation. I've never, never been a fan of the plastic casks at all. So I did most of that out of shot, but I've cut a hole in that very corner for the cooling pipes to run outside so we can situate the heat dump outside the building. And then you can hear in the background, I've just finalized the last bit of the testing. You'll be pleased to know, yes, the fan works on the heat dump. So that means that the 24 volt transformer is working perfectly also. So we'll just isolate this unit now. There we go, so that is ready to go outside once we've got the connectors and whatnot for putting the cart radiator onto that particular, you know, put this on there instead of the leaky radiator thing that was on it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is run as many cables 
uh, bits of pipe as I can before we install and then when all of the bits and bobs arrive in the post it'll just be a case of connect 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 and we'll be able to actually turn it all on and get that cold room running almost straight away and uh, yeah there's a few more jobs as well that I want to do while I've got a bit of downtime probably not going to get a chance to be fair but all of this cable up here it wants to be slung onto cable trays properly and uh, pinned to the wall where applicable so I could do with sorting this out it is a bit messy it wouldn't take a lot to tidy it up so that's something that I maybe should be getting on with over the next few days I was hoping to site the glycol bath here you see and then when we get another glycol bath to control these containers these uh, fermenters here then I suppose that could sit in there to control these and then when that cooling contraption over there finally gives up the ghost it would be just as easy to replace you know replace that with one as well so we could have four fermenters this side four fermenters this side and I think it would look pretty smart because it would all be sort of symmetrical right I've pulled out this shelving section here and uh, it's given me a little bit of access to the wall behind so we've got the consumer unit or the distribution unit or board in the corner there and then we've got sort of half a dozen cables that run into the workshop carrying ring main lighting uh, three phase and what have you and at the moment they're just pinned in a completely random fashion to the wall and then we've also got this armoured ring main here that goes all the way around the building and that carries sort of uh, uh, feed to all the double sockets that are in the brewery and uh, that's quite a big cable I, I don't know it might be six millimeter square armoured um, so that actually shoots up through the office and then goes around that doesn't actually go into the workshop that's just all this twin and earth stuff here and then this three phase also this uh, this signal cable as well I forgot what that's for uh, oh yeah that's for the radio that's for the speakers so what I'm going to do is put them in a tray when we put the false ceiling in the original brew shed the micro pub the small one we uh, had to put a soundproof ceiling because the neighbors upstairs uh, needed to be protected from any noise in there which is ironic because the new place we also have neighbors upstairs but no soundproofing but um, anyway when we did that we had to buy this extruded aluminium or steel actually extruded steel u-channel and this is basically uh, what all of the ceilings suspended by it's ceiling uh, channel but I've got four or five lengths of it spare they're three meter lengths so for this little area over here where it's a bit messy I thought we could kind of put this on the wall up there and do a straight run and have this as a cable channel I know it's not the proper stuff but it's as close as the only difference being with the cable tray it's made out of the same stuff but it's perforated everywhere for you to get your tie wraps in well I thought we'd just lay the cables in and we'll just put a tie wrap all the way around it just to hold them in the channel eh? but at least it'll give it an appearance of tidiness because at the moment looking up there if I just track along the top of the shelf you'll see how messy all that cable work is so yeah look it's like off the wall off the ceiling off the wall again now I'm gonna keep that corner there that's where we're gonna send all the pipe work and everything through but I'm not happy how it's all spread out so let's just pop a bit of trunking up there tidy this up and then I'll be happier to site the glycol chiller down there knowing full well that I'm not gonna have to uh, get in and drill holes and what have you for for messy cables there we have it that's taken us right up to five o'clock that has so I'm pretty pleased I also got the pipe work in for the heat dump outside so let's just take a closer look at what we've done 
looks a hell of a lot tidier. So first port of call is, we have tails down here, of course, to go to the glycol chiller. We've got plenty of spare. There's a good eight, 10 foot there, wherever we decide to site it. And then coming in off the top of the electric box, all we've done is we've called this the termination zone. Anything after that is for another day. So we've taken all this stuff across. This is gonna be changed at some point. I haven't got time to do it today. And uh, as you can see, we've got the pipes clipped in, ready to go outside. These pipes don't need insulating because they're gonna be recirculating glycol. And we actually want them to lose heat. So uh, they're fine as they are. We've put all the cable into the tray and put tie wraps in it. We've cut the tray nice and neat so it's running around the wall. And uh, it's also stood off the wall with these timber blocks so we can get tie wraps around the back of it and of course, it can cool. It's never gonna carry a stupid load, but you know, no wrong with over engineering a project. This is on a carry wampus because we've got more cable to pull from the box this way. So we'll do that another day. Uh, this is just about right. This one here is gonna be rerouted. That's why it's not tied in. And you can see the cable nicely goes around the corner. And then that's where we terminate again. Through the wall is another day, another project that we'll pick up. But considering what that looked like half an hour ago, an hour ago, that is considerably neater. That's the kind of stuff that I want to be producing or replicating across the whole of the brewery and throughout any other areas where I'm working in. Because I think if we main, if we put these cables and pipes into a maintainable position it makes life easier in the future you know you got to think of the next guy who's coming along going to work on them and i'm working on somebody's dog shit of a mess at the moment so the last thing i want to do is come back to another one when i come back to work on my own my own installation so this side is where that uh, pipe work and electric cable comes through all to be rerouted when all of this area is done and dusted and then we are through through the wall of that that hole that we cut out earlier on today so going into the junkyard that's a fair pile of timber isn't it for the log burner so you can see right over there in that corner that's the hole where we've come through the wall and then i've given us well i'll just pick this cable up here this pipe should I say you can see we've sort of got 15 20 foot so we can site the heat dump anywhere out here that we that we want to there's the cause from drilling the brick wall look as well so that can stay there for now I can come back inside and close the door and uh, well just a quick whip around to tidy up Yeah, that's a Thursday in the bag. I've uh, got no car because I dropped it off this morning to get the uh, suspension looked at. Um, so Gemma's come down to pick me up and literally while I've just waited that 10-15 minutes, the devil makes work for idle hands they say. So I uh, thought I'd get stuck in and I cleaned up all of those cooling coils for the chiller. I'm probably not gonna use them in this chiller, but at least we've got over a dozen cooling coils spare, should we need them for something else. Right, I'm off to drop these barrels off at my mate's house, and then uh, edit the vlog, folks. So, thanks for tuning in, and uh, well, if you're so obliged, I'd much like you to join me tomorrow. So we'll see you then.